Hello, I have a stone here tied to a rope and it is swung in a vertical circle. How fast must the stone be swung at the bottom such that it can do the loop successfully? Some students think that to do the loop successfully, the stone just have to just arrive at the top with a velocity of zero. That can't be right because if the stone arrive here with a zero velocity and the earth is still pulling the stone down, the rope is still pulling the stone down, what will happen to the stone is going to fall straight down. It will not be doing the circular motion. So what must the velocity at the top be? So at the top position, both the gravitational pull and the rope's tension are acting downward in the centripetal direction. So we apply Newton's second law on the stone. At the top position, the weight and the tension together provides the required centripetal force, which we are going to write as m v squared over r. So small m is of course the mass of the stone, and big R is the radius of the circular motion, which is this length here, which is of course also the length of the rope. So if we swing the stone at a very high speed, then the tension in the rope is going to be large. But if we swing the stone slower and slower, then the tension is going to become smaller and smaller. So to just make the loop successfully is when the tension in the rope is zero at the top position. So we write the tension to be zero. Um, so the little m doesn't matter. Rearrange the equation and you get the minimum speed of the stone at the top is square root of g times r. So now that we know the stone speed at the top, what must the stone speed be at the bottom? We realize that for this circular motion, uh, the speed of the stone is not constant because the stone has got to be slowing down as it goes up and uh, speeding up as it comes down because of gravity. So applying the principle of conservation of energy, the Ke and Gp of the stone at the top must be equal to the Ke and Gp of the stone at the bottom. We'll write the Ke of the stone at the top as half mvt square, and the Gp of the stone at the top will be mg times uh, this height here, which is of course 2 times the radius of the circular motion. So we are taking the Gp of the stone to be 0 at the bottom position, and the Ke of the stone at the bottom, of course, uh, we'll write it as half m vb square. So the mass of the stone uh, gets cancelled out, and we are going to replace vt with square root of gr. So vt square is just gr. Simplify the equation, and you get vb to be equal to square root of 5gr. So it doesn't matter what the mass of the stone is. If you want it to do the circular motion, it must be swung at a speed of square root of 5gr at the bottom. And uh, the larger the circular motion, the larger the required speed at the bottom. Okay, that's all. Ta-ta!